Hey guys, it's Vince, and today in this video, I am going to be doing my first product review. Um, I was contacted by Newmaster, and they gave me the choice of selecting what tool I wanted to review. And of course, many of you already know I do tons of spindle cables. Um, and one of the most useful tools I have is my rotary tool, my Dremel. Um, but the Dremel is a bulkier tool and they offer a rotary tool that is much smaller. You can see how small this unit is. It's 3.6 volts. It's their NRT0036. And I'm going to use this to open up an H17HY connector. And I wanted to do the unboxing. And we're just going to cover right now how the box is. I mean, this feels like it's well made. And believe me, I package a lot of things. Um, I do love that the accessory list is actually printed on the box. So that's awesome. I mean, you can see here it comes with the sanding bands, the pole, what they consider to be the pole, which is actually uh, the post, collets for drilling to, uh, grinding stone, they've misspelled, uh, that's five, uh, carving diamond bits, again, this is misspelled, polishing, felt wheel pole, and cleaning brush. Um, overall, box looks perfect. Of course, uh, I'd like to see them actually correct the spelling. <coughs> going to unbox it now. Let's see. But the box certainly feels like it is sturdy. Let's see if I can grab that tab. Here we go. And now we're good. Let's see what we got here. Okay. We've got a nice plastic case, and it looks like we've got all our accessories right here. We've got our collets, of course, uh, the bits, felt polishing pads, uh, sanding drums, and of course the USB adapter in order to charge the unit. Let's see, we've got our bag. Here's the unit, and of course on the back, and I'll tell you right now, this unit feels really well made. It's got nice rubber padding on the front, very light tool. Its voltage is rated 3.6 volts RPM. It's got three stages, 5,000 to 15,000. And again, they even got their contact email on it, which I do like. I think that's awesome. Um, call it itself. Thread pattern's perfect. This feels really nice and smooth. Nice collets. Very, very simple tool. Not much to explain here, guys. I mean, this unit actually feels well made. Let's just see how the battery is. Okay, there's a the first step. You can hear the RPM changing. Now, I'm going to throw this unit on charge before I use it because I don't know how long this battery has been sitting. But uh, in general practice, I can tell you right now, 5,000 to 15,000 RPM is plenty for the application I'll be doing. I want to see what kind of power this thing has. I can knock it over how smooth it feels. Um, in terms of when this is on, there's very, very little vibration, which is excellent if you're trying to do precision work. <clears throat> and this is one connector that, being precise with, I only have the client's connector, so if I screw it up, uh, I have to order another one, so I don't have a second chance. You can see the direction arrow in which uh, the unit is actually spinning. Um, so again, you know exactly what you're doing with that. And uh, you can see here, your locking mechanism. Everything here feels super smooth. Um, there's your USB charge plug. And I'm going to test this unit out after I charge it, so I'll cut back in after she's fully charged. Okay guys, I wanted to discuss really quick uh, the user's manual that this unit comes with. I see a lot of reviews done, and I don't see a lot of coverage of the user's manual in terms of what you can expect. I see a lot of people bash uh, overseas products because usually the user's manuals are not written correctly in um, legible English. Uh, this user's manual is excellent. It's not very long at all. It's only a couple pages. But again, it pretty much covers all the basics of using a rotary tool. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this, you can see your switch, your collets. It covers all your technical data about your battery. Uh, it's 3.7 volt lithium ion. 
Charge time is two hour now. I will say I had this unit, it must have came uh, partially charged, of course, and it only charged literally for maybe 15 minutes. So it ships from the factory pretty much with a ready to go unit. Uh, battery tool use and care covers, very basic. Uh, operation, press the switch once, turn on the grinder, LED one will be uh, light on. Again, there are some uh, English uh, mistakes in terms of writing for legibility, but other than that, I mean, the English is really, really well done, enough to where you'll understand exactly what you're dealing with. The speed will be fast at the beginning and then back to 6,000 RPM and set for speed one after two seconds. Press switch twice, LED uh, two will be light on and the speed will change 10,000 RPM, press it again a third time, 15,000 RPM and press it for a fourth time to turn the unit off. Uh, sanding bands, collet, drilling, grinding stone, carving diamond bits, polishing, felt wheel, cleaning brush. Um, overall, I will say that uh, I'm really impressed with how many end mills this unit actually includes. Uh, the attachments are amazing and it just depends on what application you're doing. Um, if there was only one other tool that I would really, really like to see added, uh, there is um, drilling, uh, actual drill bits, and I'm just really not a big fan of including those. I would actually like to see them include a uh, stainless polishing wheel. Um, these are amazing. I use them all the time, especially, again, dealing with electronics. I'm just talking about for my applications. Uh, if you're dealing with a 3D printer, you want to clean the um, nozzles on a 3D printer, this is amazing to use. Uh, again, the stainless wheel, low RPM. I see a lot of guys work their uh, Dremels or their rotary tools to death. You do not want to do that. We want to keep it nice and smooth. And again, this is a real nice accessory. I would like to see them add and subtract the drill bits. I don't think we need to add drill bits. Not many guys are using this for drilling. Um, I already have the tool set up here for actual uh, grinding. And you can see here, I've got my rotary file. Now this is my rotary file. I will be using other end mills in here as such the uh, drum for sanding. And you can see I've loaded it on their mandrel. Um, you can see here, it fits the H17 connector virtually perfectly. But right now we use this rotary file to take down the majority of material and you can see the majority of material in there. You can see all of that has got to come down. So what's going to be interesting is to see at 3.7 volt lithium ion power will actually remove this material. I think we're going to have no problem doing it. Again, I stay at a very low RPM with the Dremel technically. I stay at between uh, 10 to 12,000 and this will easily do that. So one thing, like I said, I noticed is how smooth this is. It's just amazing. It doesn't even feel like it's on. It's very, very quiet. So I'm going to go to in-between RPM. Uh, we'll go from there. We'll see if we can just take out some material real quick. Come back over here. And you can see plenty of power here. And I'm just feathering out. Take out those groove marks. We're just going to come down as much as we can, and I'm not putting a lot of pressure. Why I like going this RPM, guys, is I can control the depth real easy. You see how careful I am? I'm moving real slow. That's it. Oh, yeah, we're getting it real nice. You can see all the material removed. Do a little bit more feathering. I'm going to come in real close. Keep my hands pretty relaxed.
and you can see all that texture is virtually gone. And now we're ready for sanding. Now what I want to do is see if we can have enough torque to open up right here. You can see all this interior metal, all of this has got to be removed. So let's just see if we have enough power because I think this thing will easily do this. Very easy. And again, I'm staying at a lower RPM, and you can see it's already cutting through real nice. Now, if I go to the higher RPM, I'm going to have a much faster cut. So I'd like to be careful with that. Again, depending upon how well you guys are trained. Oh, yeah, this is cutting like butter now. So you really want to be careful, because the faster you go, the faster you're going to cut. And if you've never done this before, one mistake, then you're basically SOL. What we do is we feather this connector out. You can see how much I've removed already. It's just coming right down. And this is so easy to hold, it's so light. Very little resistance. We let the tool do the work. Then when I get asked, why do you why does this cable cost so much, the A17? Now you know why. And you can see we're getting there now. You can see just how nice. It's almost done. And uh, we'll cover this in more detail as I get done, but without a doubt, tons of power to do this job. And I'll tell you, uh, it's cutting as fast as a Dremel. I'm not noticing any difference. Definitely enough power for it. Um, I'm dying to see it polished. That's something uh, I really uh, use a lot also. I polish the actual um, ring terminals on all my cables prior to applying uh, deoxid. But overall, the unit is just working fantastic. And like I said, it's really well balanced. I can't get over how well balanced this is in terms of vibration. The Dremel, even with the flex shaft, has got a lot of vibration. Uh, this is much, much smoother. It's much lighter to hold and really get uh, really precise work with it. So loving the way that is. Uh, what I might do now is just do uh, a quick end mill change, and then we'll go back into using it as a sanding uh, drum to actually round out, smooth out the base of the connector. Again, very easy to do, just hand tight. See a lot of guys over tightening this. Now with the Dremel, you do get a wrench that uh, if you had to, you can use this wrench with the Dremel. This unit, you do not need to do that. You use just your hands. And again, use common sense with that. Don't go to kill the unit. I do feel the unit naturally getting warm because it is being put to the test. Turn this on again. Come over here and just light pressure. And that's the big thing, when you're sanding, I see a lot of guys using heavy, heavy hands. That's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to use the tool to do the job. So you just press just enough. And what we're doing is just rounding this out. We don't want to go too high in RPM. I'm probably at right now, I believe, 10,000. And I'm just going in and out. I'm just boring it out, basically. And you can see we're getting it nice and smooth. You can see how it's starting to come out. And that's what we're looking for. As it comes in more like that, and the beauty of this is with that low RPM, you're really not gonna feather it too much. You can do this just right. Get that finished just where we want it. We don't remove too much material because we still want this stress relief to be in position so that we can naturally insert our cable and that looks fantastic. You can see just how smooth that came out and how close of proximity we are actually to the hole placement. I'm just basically kissing it. I'm not doing much at all right here.
Let that tool do the work and just keep stroking it right inside there you go. Again. That came out beautiful. And you can see just how smooth. So again, I'm going to clean my, uh, my work area up real quick and like I said, I will cover exactly uh, the next step which will be finalizing this and again I want to do some more end mills in the unit preferably uh, polishing because I'll be using that exclusively for this as well okay guys we're back at the workstation with the new master rotary tool and I want to discuss a component that I have to clean frequently for prototyping and this is my MakerBot Method X carbon 3d printers extruder now for those of you not familiar with what this costs this is about four hundred dollars this unit um, I rebuild them all the time and again we've already seen the sanding drum work uh, the mandrel for this is the same diameter of the extruder's nozzle now the interesting thing about these extruder nozzles they are all stainless steel this is all one piece you can see the extruder tip and this performs exceptional when it's clean like everything else well one of the main reasons I wanted this tool is you can do this the mandrel size is the same diameter of the actual extruder's tip. Now I would leave this at low RPM and now you can come over here with the proper Scotch-Brite red, red uh, pad and you can clean your tip in seconds at low RPM. And there you go. Now you just take this, come right here, low pressure, very, very low pressure. We're not trying to make the tool work, you're essentially trying to make the pad work. And what we're doing is we're just cleaning this tip, just hit a little bit of pressure, and let's get them at 5,000 RPM. And now we'll, we'll uh, look at her. And you should be able to see in that camera, and you can once again do this all the way through the entire unit. Nice and slow. And this works exceptionally well for this. You do it over on the actual crust where it comes up. And this is where you usually find filament gets stuck or you can have headaches with proper seating. And that's why I use the Scotch-Brite red pad. It's the perfect grit for this along with the proper rotary tool. And again, this is really what I wanted this for. It's so much nicer than always having to work with the Dremel once again with the flex shaft. This is working perfectly. So now what we'll do is we'll just turn her off and we should have a nice clean nozzle. And you can see just how perfect that is. This is stainless so nothing's going to happen. Now, the next step, I'm going to unchalk this. You can see how nice and clean that is now. Is now what we're going to do is I've already got the felt one of the felt pads, the smaller ones, on the mandrel. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is just take a tiny bit of polish. I'm going to apply that to the pad very, very lightly. And the reason I like putting it on the pad, and some guys like putting it on the part itself, if you put it on the pad, it's not going to spray as much as long as you're working it. And the felt works exceptionally. So we come over here. I always put gloves on for this because I hate getting my hands a mess. It's just harder to clean up. And now we just insert this. Now, once again, RPM does not need to be high. I recommend 5,000. Put your hand over it, start it. And in this way, any material that's going to come off has already come off. You don't get any in your face. And now you're going to come in here and just work it around the stainless. And within a very short amount of time, I'll show you the finished product. And this is going to make these extruder nozzles last essentially forever because they are again stainless. Come over to the side. Once again, I'm not adding any real pressure. Just rotating in my hand. Should, right in the camera be able to start seeing that glow it is really really coming in and 
Once again, I'm not putting any pressure on the tool. Let the tool do the work. There you go. Now, for the next step, you can do the entire shaft, which I recommend, depending upon what restoration project you're doing. This is a functional restoration, meaning that when I put this back in the service, the cleaner this nozzle is, naturally it's going to conduct heat better and therefore uh, hopefully make the, the uh, filament get heated better and just increase the longevity of this component. So again, I just come over here and just brush it, but I'm going to show you a real quick way to once again polish this, and you're probably saying the same thing I am. Once you've applied it, you can see all the residue we've gotten off. We're going to untake this off now. We're going to chalk it back up. Lock this down. Start our low RPM. It'll start. There we go. And once again, that's why we go low RPM. And now we're just going to come over here with a microfiber and barely hold on to this, and it's just going to buff itself. And it'll bring itself right back to life. That's what I love about tools like this, is they're kind of underrated in the sense of what they can do. Once again, the extruder that I'm restoring with this is $400. So if you're taking a small component like this and just take your time with it, you can get some really amazing results. And you can throttle up on the tool for um, burnishing. And I wouldn't go past probably 10,000 RPM, but you're again creating a little bit of balance with your fingers because you're adding a little more um, stability to the shaft because once again, as it gets away from where it chalks up, it's going to have problems with vibration. I'm just gonna turn it off now. And now you can see we're brand new. I hope you can see that. Can you see that glow? Yeah, brand new. So this tool has been amazing. I think it performs exceptional. As a matter of fact, you can see the number that's actually on the extruder nozzle. But this, once again, is one of those components that's kind of overlooked at $70 a piece, and they really last forever if you just know how to clean them. But that really shows you what's possible. And I love these felt uh, components because these felt polishing components really, really make a difference if you understand how to use them. A lot of guys use them bare without using the proper uh, polish. I always recommend a polish. Um, another thing you can check out, and this works exceptionally well, especially in restoration projects like this, Q-tip cut in half, piece of masking tape as a shim. And what you're going to do is just loosen up, fit it, and if you want to cut and polish, just don't tighten it too much. Once again, low RPM. You'll hear her cycle down, and now you've got a cotton polishing swab, and you'll really, really bring out everything in this. Like a mirror. Very, very simple. If you're doing jewelry, guys, I'm telling you right now, I would pick one of these up in a heartbeat because you can definitely see what you're left with. And there you go. So, I mean, that's a brand new nozzle, and this will go naturally right back in to our extruder bed. Once again, with the Q-tip, you can do all kinds of neat stuff. In worst case scenario, you can see if you put too much friction, it's just going to stop, but it certainly doesn't stop the tool or cause any problems, which is better. And there you go. So, again, overall, this tool has been exceptional. I've used it now on um, countless occasions. Once again, I was really impressed using it with the sanding uh, drum. I think that it working with the 817 connector, I didn't know how it would do with that. With only 3.7 volts and lithium ion, it worked absolutely exceptional. Other than ge generating slight heat, which is naturally from the friction, the unit itself performed fantastic. So. Overall, super impressed. Uh, once again, the only thing I would really hope that they do is just include, like I said, that stainless brush. Um, but that's it. Other than that, the, the actual bits that come with it, the collets, again, uh, these are exceptionally priced, especially considering the price of Dremel tools now, even the cordless ones, are like $40, $50. I'm 
unheard of, and that shipped Prime. So, okay, guys, in this portion of the review, I'm going to take it to the next level. Um, I know what I always want to see with reviews, and I tell you guys this, which are CNC controllers all the time if you're looking to purchase them. I want to see inside the tool. As an engineer, I want to see exactly how this tool was made. And if you look at this tool, let's take a quick gander at this. You can see, first of all, what I love is they're using a ball bearing. And you can see the shaft is going right through a ball bearing. That explains why this unit's so smooth. You can see the DC motor here. Solder points look extremely clean. And I want to point out something really quick. I never explained to the manufacturer I would open it up. Uh, it's something I always do to double check everything. And you can see here the lithium ion cell, beautifully packaged. Everything here is nice and neat. We've got plug connections in case the unit had to be serviced. If you ever had to change the lithium ion battery, you could do that. Um, you could see right here the circuit board, we could see the battery connector, USB connector, and you could see once again, I hope you can see that, those solder points, everything here is soldered on, very, very well done, very well done, extremely clean, and this unit is extremely smooth, you can even see we have that bore hole going through, and this is for our locking mechanism to lock the shaft as you actually go to uh, install one of your end mills and, and actually lock it down. Um, this is an immaculate tool, and honestly, for the money, once again, I am blown away. This has got an ABS frame on it. I can feel it. It's very, very strong. Uh, and with the rubber grip, I'm telling you right now, you can't beat it. You've got your Phillips head screws that go on the, on the actual base of the unit. And then these two top screws are the ones without tips on them. You can see it, they're a little smaller. These little guys right here. If I can magnetize, it's easier to see it that way. But um, what I'm gonna do in order to make this tool last as long as possible is I always use deoxic gold on all my connections. And again, this is non-conductive. You can put it on any connection. You're all set. I just hit the motor connections with this. That's all set. You can hit your battery terminals. You can hit your USB terminal. And this will assure these connections are protected forever. You'll, you will definitely see an increase in the longevity of your equipment. And go on Deoxid's site. You can check it out. But I've got this in my store. I'm going to put a link there. Once again, NASA uses this. The company's using it. We're all Fortune 500, and this stuff is amazing. Everything that leaves my shop has the oxy on it. Um, but again, I wanted to show you guys the quality of this tool. I told them I'm not going to pull any punches. I wanted you to see everything going on. And I can tell you right now, this thing is immaculate. For the price that it is, it is blowing me away, the quality that it actually comes with. So again... Uh, I hope that the video has been helpful. Uh, I hope that it's answered some of your questions. If you guys have any more questions, you will definitely see me using this in the shop more. Um, again, for multitudes of applications, mainly uh, the spindle cable assembly, this, this thing will be used to death. I can tell you that right now. Uh, but if there's any questions you have, I'm going to put the link for the company as well as uh, a link to actually purchase the item. And just so everyone is aware, the only compensation I got for this was just this unit. That was it. So not getting paid. I wanted it to be completely unbiased in the sense that other than getting the unit shipped to me, this is it right here. And you can see exactly what this is. Now I'm going to make a recommendation to the vendor. Um, and that is that all of your screws that were inserted in the tool were screwed in properly. They were not over torquing on the screws. But what's missing is they do not have tamper evident uh, applications on any of them. And I would highly recommend you apply a tamper evident seal over these screws because number one, it will assure the fact that if you ever do warranty uh, work on the tool that it's been done properly. And it will also uh, deter possibly anybody being dishonest and manipulating anything inside the tool. Anything that leaves my shop always has tamper evidence seals on it for that reason. Um, again, it protects everybody as far as I'm concerned. But if you guys are in the market, the price of this tool, every shop should have this, at least in the portable format. I might even buy one for my car because there's many times, uh, at least it's happened to me, I don't know if it's ever happened to anyone else, that 
I would like to clean the actual uh, battery terminals. If they get any corrosion on them, and it's, especially in Florida where I live, we get a lot of humidity, uh, that corrosion can lead to contact issues. And again, your battery may not be making contact. You have this in the car, it's portable. You can go out there, clean the contacts in a couple minutes and put this in your glove box and you're good to go. So again, applications are endless. Check it out, guys. Uh, I thank you all for your support. Take care.